Afternoon everybody and welcome to the first video, any video for about a month I think and first McKenna video for knocking on for two months. Uh, the videoing takes quite a while, um, I've lost count of how many takes of this opening bit of this one has taken today. Sometimes it flows, most times it doesn't. Then there's a bit of editing and uploading, it takes a while. So the building far outstrips the videoing and I ought to do a build than a video, it would be much easier all round really. Um, but anyway, at the moment we've got around about 30 or 40, yeah I think it's knocking on 40 mostly basic models made and that's been since the uh, beginning of May really, or just after Mechanuity. Um, and most of them are quite quick builds, uh, we do have a couple of decent ones, a cracking crane coming up in the near future. Um, that was a longer build, about seven hours. But anyway, in an effort to get through some of the models, here we have all five models of the very latest Meccano Multimodels 5 model set. As you can see on the box there, construction loader set. Uh, the first one I bought was, uh, I think it was the end of February. Um, and I've done a video on that one, which is this, uh, we'll call this one here on the left, the loader, as it's the uh, A model box. Sort of a bulldozer thing. Um, I won't go into that one because I've already done a video on that one alone really. I, I say video of that one, it's probably a bit of a set review as well I suppose. As the first model models tend to be. Uh, just to, a bit of a recap. First of all you can see the video in the same uh, playlist as this one. The Meccano Multimodels. Um, short recap. A little bit figly mainly because the box like structure at the back it doesn't do anything other than roll forward and backwards there's no encapsulated nuts in these sets and we'll come on to that and the lack of play value after the build on all but one of the models as they are built from the instructions but well I've made a few tweaks uh, but yeah you can see all about that one uh, I think it's about a 20 minute video goes into some detail regarding some alignment um, niggles we'll say. Uh, then we've got this rather smart uh, dumper truck is the next one along here. Uh, it's been done before very 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 almost the same actually uh, but very similar to uh, Marks and Spencer's one um, thanks to Ralph Lawton for pointing that one out and I do have uh, that model made, I found one off eBay cheap, I think it was built and taken apart, so it wasn't mint. Uh, it's a smart model, but this one's far better, um, mainly because the wheels are uh, uh, a bit more chunky, um, looks a bit more fun I suppose. Um, there's more to that model, play value, than any of the others as built standard. Uh, then we've got the cherry picker, which Perhaps an odd model, but certainly relevant for today. Today's uh, construction sites and, and what have you. Then we've got this rather smart looking, almost like a buggy, over here on the uh, on the right. It's actually a loader. I thought it was a forklift from the very small picture on the box, which you can see just above it on the right there. Uh, that is one of the download uh, models. You go onto Meccano UK and hopefully find the instructions. You might struggle because when I uh, went to download the instructions, all I could get from the three files that were there were the first three models that are included in the instruction book anyway. That's this loader, the dumper and the cherry picker. Uh, I asked Meccano via the Facebook page, they pointed me in the same direction and they got exactly the same. Uh, fortunately, Ralph Lawton sent me some copies of uh, these uh, instructions for these final two. One thing about the PDFs though, that when you do zoom in they go a bit mushy, the detail's not great, so that's something that does need to really be improved. Um, it's, uh, I actually built one of them on my phone, uh, I can't think it was the last one, no, it was the, this. I'll call that the high level loader, and I'll show you that why, uh, it, I'll call it that uh, in a bit. Uh, but essentially, uh, they're all pretty good models, they aren't... Perhaps as good value for money as the old five model set, which was the uh, motorbike one with the green tank. I call it uh, 
a Kawasaki ZX7R Street Fighter uh, purely because of the green tank I suppose um, I suppose you got more chunkier parts in that set although you can get a vast amount uh, but you did uh, just using the motorbike as an example you got steering and you got rear suspension and the vehicle obviously rolled forward and backwards as indeed these do uh, this is a neat little set though um, value for money this, one, this one's only about a quid more than that last one so money's about on a par considering that one's been around for a long time this one has been around for what uh, three or four months now uh, still not easy to get on the high street most of these come from John Lewis uh, normal price of $14.95, $14.99 I think it is the benefit of those is if you have them delivered to your local Waitrose store it's free and they do most of the latest range as well but only online so as I say we've got the five models here all the set models uh, this loader, the dumper, cherry picker, high level um, loader there and this thing well, answers on a postcard, or I suppose email these days. Uh, what is it? Ah, I've asked around, what do you think it is? Personally, I think it's supposed to represent either a road roller, or a, I don't know what the proper name for it is, but like the tarmac layers you get that go along and uh, strip and lay tarmac. Uh, road layer, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. Now, that was a weird uh, build, um, in a way. There's quite a few one bolt fixings, uh, or should we say there's odd one bolt fixings on all of them here and there really. However, that one was quite interesting, the way it went together there. Um, the last few stages let it down really. Uh, but anyway, we'll go into the details of each of the models, except for the loader which we've already done here. Uh, the other four we'll go into a bit more detail. Right folks, the dumper truck, and I'm going to say it, the one on the left is one I made earlier. That's the Marks and Spencers version. Um, it could be five or six years old now, I suppose. Um, as you can see, probably 98% the same. The difference is being the wheels. Um, the odd colour difference in the part. Uh, the back of the low bay, that's a special formed part on this one, the Marks and Spencers one uh, the wheels of course, but the, the main annoyance with the Marks and Spencers one, and I'm not going to go into this one fully, I'll do this one at a later date is the fact that there's no spaces uh, or there's, no, there's not enough spaces in the set uh, it was a complete set, but there's just a couple of spaces missing on, and that makes it quite a poor model in my book, that play there um, we'll do that one at a later date, but the new model has a couple of spaces and you don't get that. I think the wheels make the model. Uh, it's more chunkier model altogether, really. Um, quite a smart model. Fairly weighty. I mean, they're only smallish models, but they're fairly weighty. Now, one thing about all the last four sets of these I've had, um, I'll say one thing, it's a couple of things, but it's all regarding finish. Um, the first set, yes, the zinc was a little bit dull on the loader, but essentially, it was okay, there were no um, marks in it, um, there was no scratches, you may find the odd part, the zinc part doesn't have Meccano stamped in it, which annoys me a little bit really, but uh, nothing really major, I like to show off the name you see. Um, with all the later sets, the, all four sets, they have some parts that are dull, some parts that are not stamped, these are the zinc parts, some parts you could argue a little bit tarnished or marked uh, the zinc's probably a bit thin uh, which is annoying um, and the odd yellow part in each of the sets has had a bit of paint missing normally on the edge of somewhere um, I don't think it was this model but on one of the models there was there was um, on one of the slots in these yellow obtuse angle brackets here there was a, a mark in the paint or well, paint missing uh, of course, if you had washers, or more washers in the set, and if you've got spare washers you could do this, I'd recommend anybody putting washers uh, where you've got bolts through slotted holes, or indeed flexible plates. It's 
too easy to damage without. Um, it's out, not so bad when bolts are nice and new and shiny and smooth, especially slotted holes when they get old, a bit scra scratched and marked and perhaps a little bit mangled due to heavy or a lot of use. You can damage the plates, uh, and you know try and keep your plates uh, in good nick as much as you can. Uh, your flexible ones certainly. It's more solid. Uh, oh, so we shall say less rickety than the Marks and Spencer's one I've already shown. Purely because the way it's built, with the, uh, you can see, the spaces either side, of this narrow, uh, what one inch by half inch, double bent strip, uh, that holds the uh, low bay on. Um, that is the main difference for the model. Other difference is the wheels, of course, which you can see. The front uh, girder plate there being black, not silver. Um, but essentially, it is the same. Uh, it does look better with the bigger wheels and a lot more chunkier. Uh, I know you can't really do anything about it. Ooh. And as you can see, it's quite free running. Uh, some of the others aren't. Um, but you've got three inch axles in this 75mm. Um, they do stick out a little bit, perhaps a little bit too much. There ain't a lot you can do about that, of course, with a set. You've only got two axles. Of course, as you build up your stocks, you could probably change that if you wanted to. Uh, neaten up the model, perhaps. Um, it is a smart model. Uh, no problems with the model or the instructions. Um, it's just that thing with the axle sticking out aesthetically. But again, when we come to look at some of the other models, if they were two and a half inch axles, they wouldn't be wide enough. So you, you can't really man about that. Something you could change quite easily yourself once you build up some parts. But uh, no uh, issues with the build. Most of the parts are quite uh, decent. The, the finish is, shall we say, the zinc's a bit thin really, I suppose. Um, but uh, it works a treat, you know, there's not much to it, but it does have more play value than the first model, and indeed several, well really all the models, as they are built, um, as well as it rolling forward and backwards, we've got the tipper action. So, nice model that one, you know, something like yeah, 35 minute build, I suppose. Took me 48, women out making, but that is probably the best looking model the reason why it's not the A model uh, I'm told is because the uh, it's um, very similar to the Marks and Spencer ones so it's already been done so at least the box looks fresh but it is a better model than the Marks and Spencer's one just for the addition of a couple of spaces really so we move on to the third model and this is the last model in the instruction book um, the Cherry Picker Perhaps a strange model, certainly different model, relevant model to modern society, I suppose, um, where they wouldn't have been many, many years ago, uh, in the, um, shall we say, golden years of Meccano building, just before Second World War and probably the 1950s. Uh, a fresh model, if you like, fresh looking model. Uh, not without a few niggles. I've got one and a bit sides of A4 for this one. Uh, build time 44 minutes, probably half an hour. The snag, well not snag, oh, I can't think of a word really, the um, annoying thing, if you like, with this model is that it doesn't do anything other than rolling forward and back, where it has the potential to do a lot. Now, as built, this model is pretty much as you can see it now. That's how it is. Everything is fixed. The um, the bucket or chair, uh, all the arms and the pivots, they're all fixed. There's no encapsulated nuts, nylock nuts if you want to call them, with this set. But there are spare nuts available in the set um, to do something with. And uh, after getting caught out a few times when I'm at work on my break and, I don't know, forgetting to take a spanner, I'll make sure I've got a spanner spare in my wallet. Now... What I was able to do, and I'll show you a few in a minute, uh, I was able to add lock nuts quite easily. 
Um, and I know it's a set model based on parts made with the A model. Uh, and they obviously don't use as much as the A model in general for the other models in the set. Um, the addition of a spanner would make the models and the set to me so much more appealing from the play value point of view once the model's been made. Um, I mean, if you've got a cherry picker, you want it to do what it's supposed to do. Now, obviously, it rolls forward and back. Uh, you'll notice the wheels are backwards on this model. Uh, the dumper truck were half and half. The loader, there was both the right way round. Um, but before we get on to my additions, if you like, my optional extras, I suppose, um, the finish, I, mean, I call it paint, it's probably not paint, it's probably plastic coated or something like that, powder coated or something, it's a bit gloopy and thick in places and on one of the triangular plates the actual part hasn't doesn't seem to have been finished off very well, it's a bit rough and they've painted over that, you can't see it though of course, it's behind wheels, but you need things to be right these days. Um, I won't mention the words I've used regarding the lack of pivots on the arms and that on this, but it begins with S and it's not uh, any more than four letters. Uh, I think from a we're all right. I say we, I, uh, also have been at this game, even though I've had me break from it for quite a while. Although no expert builder, we can see easy ways how to improve a model, uh, and I, I look at it, try and look at it from a beginner's point of view. It's quite a bright set, you know, with the yellow on the blue and the silver. You know, it would attract people, I think, and. When they get to the Mechit, I think they'll be quite disappointed at the end result, I think so. And all for the lack of a spanner, the cost of a spanner. Um, you could add nylock nuts, I suppose, in some models. Other models there may not be room for. Um, but uh, if that was cheaper to do, fine. If not, add a spanner, show people how to do a lock nut. I know it's old fashioned, but it works. It takes a bit to adjust if you want the model to stay in position once you've moved it. Uh, the wheels do catch the body so it doesn't rotate that well, that said it doesn't roll off the table like the dumper truck does, but they do move freely enough and I suppose it will free up the more it's been played with. Um, the bucket uh, chair here, that was a bit fiddly to do because it's quite enclosed, but neat once it's finished. Um, to be honest, for me, it really is a bad model without my additional little bits on top. Now my little additions to this, uh, what is quite a dull model, that's the word dull. Um, there's plenty of spare nuts in the set, all you need is an extra spanner. Now if this is your first set, that ain't going to happen, unless you just happen to have a small spanner knocking around. Uh, maybe even pliers, but to be honest it's too fiddly in areas to do that. You do need another spanner. So, for those of you who happen to see this video before buying one of these sets, uh, don't make the uh, make the first one, that's okay. It could do with a lock nut on the, uh, two lock nuts on the, on the loader, but it's an okay model. The dumper truck is fine, but wait till you've got another set, or you've managed to pick up another spanner before making these, because these little additions will make the model so much more enjoyable to play with. I mean, it's it, to me it's more than just about building a model, taking it apart, building another model, than building models of your own imagination and creation. It's about the play value as well. Now, regular viewers will have noticed from our play value, if that's the right phrase for me, I like to add steam to some models, where well, obviously this isn't one of those models, but I can see other little things to this, like a little scene at a show, a building something, of course a building, say, building a house or something, which will be Meccano of course, uh, if I ever get round to that. So, Old Fire, if you've just bought this set, Old Fire making certainly the last uh, three models, uh, till you've got another spanner. Uh, Basically what I've done, I've pivoted uh, several areas. First up, we've got a pivot here. Won the box out of the way a little bit. Uh, on the arm itself. Basically, two lock nuts. And basically what you do, 
try and get a good view there. For those of you that know, you basically lock in one nut against the other. And you adjust the first one, the one nearest the strips on this case, uh, I'll say the first one, second one from the, my angle of view. Um, you adjust that so you've got uh, the right amount of play in the pivot. So in this case, with the um, cherry picker, I can move the arm and it should, all being well, stay in place once I've moved it. So it still has a bit of grip if you like. So that may take a while to get the adjustment right, but I'll just show you now. Uh, it will go down there like that. And then I can pull up on it like that. I mean, it will go higher than that. Outer shot there like that. Ooh, come back. <laughs> there like that. Uh, I dare say that the more the pot that gets moved, the play will get more and it might start to flop down on its own but you can readjust the lock nuts um, we've also got uh, the bucket can swing I think it can no uh, yes it can <laughs> I forgot I anyway, this about a week ago there we are you've got the bucket can swing there on its axis like that and go all the way around to there and all the way around back like that and to do that we've just got uh, a lock up there again loose enough to move tight enough so it holds in place and lastly on the chair or bucket we put a small bit of pivot in there the same again a lock up just round here there um, that is a bit restricted due to the bolt heads but generally uh, that's a bit loose as well actually but it does seem to hold in place so there you go you've got far more potential in the model to play with and even if you're just displaying it you can put it at different angles and that makes it more it just makes it more interesting and more worthwhile build that way now just before we go into the detail and there's, it's, it's a bit awkward to do this model with the lock nuts just because the lack of space lack of spacers, lack of longer bolts to do these tweaks but as I think you'll agree it looks quite smart you've got like the little brackets here sort of representing where the lights would go and a uh, little cabin there um, it's quite a neat model uh, and considering the only thing that holds the back of the body in place is the axle at the back it's quite neat um, the little cab structure does move on the axle but again the only thing that holds that in place is the axle but it is a neat model. It's a very good looking model, I think. Uh, uh, but of course, this is how it comes, you know. That's it, that's it. You, do. you think, oh, it, it could be so much more with the spare parts available. Now, it is involved uh, a little bit of tweaking, and if anybody wants to know exactly how to do it, I'll go through it in a bit more detail, if I can put it into words, if required. So if you do, let me know. Uh, the main thing to do is to do the mods as you build it, not like I did, do it with the thing built. I did have to sort of half take the cab bit apart at the back to do it. The problem is you don't have any washers or spacers uh, in the set and uh, with that and the constraints of space inside this little cab area right at the back there. Uh, you have to do think a little bit differently so how can you do it well let's do the easy one first um, you need your spanner of course and the scoop or bucket has got simple lock nuts either side suitably adjusted so it moves but it'll stay in place so we've got that there like that so that could come right down now scoop, scoop, uh, scoop something up get my words out and then you've got that. That works nicely, as you can see. There. Now, of course, the arm also moves now. It will only go that far simply because there's not a wide enough gap in the arms to clear these angle brackets here and the uh, girder plate on top forming the roof. Now, you can't do it with the set, but if you were just to add 
four washers doing it properly this is uh, you could use two and just put two washers either side at the pivot at the back just inside the strip between the strip and the flexible triangular plate that should be enough to clear that it's very close as it is now but to do it properly to save any distortion on the strips use four two at this end two at the front end here uh, that's something you can't do with the set but it does give you some more play value although it would be nice if it went above the roof say to about 45 degrees now to get to this point uh, of getting a pivot in there this may not you may not be able to see this, I'm going to try, it may go out of focus um, let's come as close as I can right you see there's a lock nut there this side here there's one the other side but because you've got nuts all the way around well, two sides you've got nuts on the back here and nut, uh, nuts and bolts on the back nuts and bolts on the top there's not enough room for the lock nut inside so what you have to do, and it is tight, and this is where I say it's best to do this early stages of the build when you're doing this back bit here. There's no spacers, there's no washers, so what you have to do, there are plenty of nuts. So what you do, you add a nut first of all to a bolt below the bolt head. There, you see one there, and there's two on the top either side. Essentially all those nuts are doing is acting as spacers. Thus, inside the model, it pulls the bolt further away from these ones here that you're trying to uh, get to pivot. Once you've done that on both, it gives you enough room for a lock nut. Uh, as I say, doing it inside, I had to half dismantle the model. Uh, I had to lift the body up out the way to get at it a bit and slightly part the back. Do it to start with, early stages of the build really. Um, whether there be enough room for an encapsulated nut, because they generally tend to be a little bit bigger than two lock nuts. But as you can see, it is quite cramped in there. Um, but it is possible to do. Uh, do it to start with when you do the build it's much easier of course you do need that extra spanner so don't throw your tools away folks the allen keys can wear uh, you could either cut it down but you'll if you buy several sets you'll have that many you won't know what to do with them same with the spanners but if this is your first set hold off from making the last three models because sorry well not the last three because you can't really do much with the last model certainly um, this model and the cherry picker hold off making that till you've got a, an extra spanner and you'll make the model so so much better to do I have slightly more detailed notes on the actual uh, pivots doing the pivots mainly in relation to this bit here um, but it is so much easier to do it without the model being built do it as you go Now he is an odd looking model and I don't really know what it is. As I said uh, right at the beginning, it could be a road roller, a road layer, tarmac layer, whatever they call them. Don't really know. It's an interesting build though. It's a little odd, uh, unusual perhaps uh, in the way it's built. It does rely on one or two single bolt fixings uh, which in the form of the roof, we've got one there, there's one down below and we've got this construction here but once it's all together that's pretty sturdy uh, don't skimp on tightening your bolts though where you've got one bolt fixing give it every chance especially as these are new parts and shining tend to move easily then um, whatever it is the construction was a little bit weird because it's quite off centre to start with thinking oh, this ain't right surely but it all comes together you have got the one bolt fixing there on the chassis uh, mount there if you like uh, but once it's all together it's not bad at all uh, it's a, I don't know what to call it really, an interesting, weird probably is a better word uh, weird looking vehicle 
but it was a bind to build because there was a couple of errors on the instructions not helped because it was the download instructions once you zoom in the images do go mushy um, the build on uh, this one where's my bit of paper which I should have had to hand earlier I suppose build time was an hour um, it should have been about 45 minutes like the rest of them really but I had issues the last um, couple of stages with the wheels in relation mainly to the front wheels on the front axle there um, if I take uh, let's get another model for the set for a second let's uh, oh, first one to hand is this uh, high level loader that's as the wheels normally come we call that the right way around with the uh, the wheel the pattern of the wheel outermost well with this one originally it was the reverse of that the red line showing you where to thread the axle what to thread on the axle in the order to thread on the axle on both sides was wrong um, what it meant was with the wheels fitted inside the tyres the way it said say backwards the wheels were turned round so that the the face of the wheel was inside this meant uh, all sorts of issues with the spaces that's inside there the small spaces in there one each side it meant that either the tyre rubbed severely on the chassis uh, which is these strips or the tyre rubbed on the triangular plates in both cases it forced out the plates quite wide uh, it forced um, the chassis in not good so I did my own thing um, what I did I reverted uh, to the normal way of fitting the wheels into the tyres with the face of the wheel again there like that the face of the wheel outermost and if you can see there we do stick out slightly from the wheel now because of this so there's no spaces left that you could do with a watcher or two here if you uh, put the tyre on the right way around uh, or rather the wheel centre pointing outwards the right way around on the tyre or in the tyre because the wheel sticks out a little bit it acts as a little bit of a bearing or spacer so it doesn't rub quite so much on the triangular plate and move better uh, there's only one small spacer inside that was on the opposite side on the other on the instructions uh, in short doing it this way we've got it like this you've got your axle you thread it through one side or the other put one of the rubber grommets on first say this one thread it through put your wheel on with the outer part of the wheel showing outside outwards against the triangular plate it's a bit fiddling you might have to slightly move parts over a little bit but don't force them too much you don't want to prevent and not be able to get back straight then you've got a small spacer, plastic spacer you thread it through further on and then it's spacer again wheel with the the wheel itself outermost and then another rubber grommet so you've got grommet, wheel, spacer, strip, strip, spacer, wheel grommet on the outside now it's not that free running but it's, it was virtually jammed up the way it showed you to do it and there's that much distortion it was horrendous now another problem ah, I don't know if the problem's a strong, too strong a word it's certainly mistaken the instructions anyway um, the rear axle is trying in there uh, it's a bit too inset oh you can you just see one there on the left there and on the right there's the larger plastic spacer the instructions say two per side the axle is nowhere near long enough for that so you only need one uh, it does mean the axle stick out but at least 
it works this way. Whilst it's, it was an interesting build, I had no problems until started with the wheels and then the axle layout, if you like, with the front axle. Uh, it was quite nice not knowing what it was and how it was putting together, it was quite a surprise really. Uh, and I still really don't know where it is, so answers on a postcard please, somebody from Meccano or elsewhere. What do you think it is? Uh, but there you are folks, we've got uh, the, well let's go with road roller. Uh, then we've got the high level um, loader with optional extras. And another one with optional extras, the cherry picker with a few moving bits and last but not least of really this build or builds not that one yeah I did pick the wrong one up but that one the dumper truck the perhaps nicer looking dumper truck the other one being the M&S one and of course, I'm just moving that one to the side for now. In the earlier video, you'll find the low level loader or bulldozer, whatever you want to call it. So, there you go, folks. Quite a collection now of these uh, models. Uh, they will be on display. Well, they were going to be on display quite soon, in uh, mid-August in fact, at uh, Tim's at Blistill, that's Telford and Ironbridge Mechano Society at Blistill, uh, Ironbridge. The trouble is, there's been a, uh, how can I put it politely, a bit of a mess regarding the dates of the show so at the moment I still don't know exactly when the dates are going to be um, you can check the Tim's website for that Telford and Arbridge McKenna Society so folks um, a little bit of news for you um, about three weeks ago due to me not getting on with a, say a few folks in the McKenna fraternity uh, although I was thinking about it anyway, I have actually, and the, the situation at the time, give me the kick up the backside to start my own Meccano forum. Um, it's called MeccanoZone.com. It perhaps looks at things, not wholly, but in part, from a younger generation's point of view. And with me, I'll say that with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Um, we cover the full range of Meccano. We cover the latest stuff like you can see here we cover the stuff that's not even out yet we've got sections ready and waiting if you like and we have got a few posting on Mechanoid the new programmable robot uh, the new Meccano maker system sets uh, some of which will be like the one you see in front of you now uh, but rebranded but there will be others that are new the space set for example um, all the sets will be as one, the evolution parts will be as one um, uh, in with all Meccano, there won't be no separate branding for that. But as I say we've got sections for everything, we've got plastic Meccano from the 60s stuff right to the present day with the junior stuff, classic Meccano, we've got a steam section, no surprise there eh, uh, for driving your models with steam uh, and that covers not just Mammoths but, which is my favourite I suppose, but it covers any proprietary uh, toy stroke model steam engine um, be it British, English, uh, European, American wherever um, if you can use it with Meccano we want to see about it um, and of course Meccano's I say own Meccano steam engine but of course they don't only really made one themselves I suppose so uh, but yeah steam powered models we want to hear about it uh, and how you go about it. Uh, so, a broad spectrum of Meccano building. We have a section on other interests as well. There is a few rules, of course. Um, you know, basic ones like no swearing, 
Uh, but you can read about that, try not to have too many rules. And hopefully people will join in and have a bit of Meccano fun. Talking of Meccano fun, uh, tomorrow, uh, which is the 3rd of July, uh, Skegex, the 34th now, International Meccano Model Show, is being held. First day tomorrow, as I say, the 3rd of July. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this weekend, uh, at the Embassy Theatre Grand Parade in Skegness. 3.50 to get in. The parking is a little bit troublesome and expensive. It was promising to be a scorcher. Now I'm not so sure now. Uh, uh, but... It's Skegness, it's the seaside, you've got Meccano, you've got fish and chips, you've got the beach, hopefully the sun, there's the sea. So it all points to being a good day. It's arguably the biggest Meccano show, or one of the biggest Meccano shows in the world. Now that doesn't mean to say, I'm being honest now, it's absolutely massive, but it's a, it's a, on Meccano terms, being very, very much a niche hobby these days it's quite a decent size it's basically a full gym and some rooms off the gym included there's a stage in the gym the stage has got dealers on it selling parts and sets and whatever there's about six or seven dealers I suppose normally and uh, if you need parts that's probably one of the better places to go uh, to get most of the dealers in one place very much an international show you'll have people from Certainly Europe and maybe further afield there as well. Uh, and it points to a good show. Uh, just as a pointer, um, last year's video I, I did uh, on the Friday, uh, I counted 200 models that I videoed. And I didn't video them all because I'd seen some before and I'd videoed some before and I don't want to do the same thing. So you've got at least 200 models plus and that was the Friday, arguably perhaps perhaps the quietest day. Uh, I don't know. I've never been. I've only been on the Saturday once. So anyway, I waffle too much. So Meccano Zone will be there. We'll be having almost live broadcasts using the MeccanoZone.com Facebook page, which backs up the forum. Uh, we'll also hopefully be getting some video done of the show in general and put together for a showing at a later date so uh, one day I'll stop waffling folks but anyway bye for now <laughs>